Hey, what's up guys? We're reviewing a movie again. It's me, the movie reviewer. So recently my girlfriend and I were sitting down and we were about to watch this movie and I was really excited for it because he has a kid from It and I think he was a good actor. And also this movie is by Stephen King. So I was like, ooh, let's watch it. And I was completely disappointed. Let's watch it together. And you can tell me in the comments how you feel about the movie if you've seen it. So the movie starts off with what seemed like a really angsty music video. And then we cut back to the past where I'm going to explain to you the movie exposition. The movie's exposition. Is that the term? Yes, the exposition. So there's this kid called Greg and he lives in a very small town. His mom's dead. Just want to put that out there because it's an information of the movie. And uh, he and his father go to church and he reads to the church, ch church stuff. So in the crowd, there's this old billionaire uh, called... Uh, Mr. Her Hergen's phone and uh, he really liked the way he read so he went to his house and he basically asked if he could hire him to read to him every day so he reads to him every day for years and there's even this like transition where he shows him growing up wow so now he's in like high school age and he goes to high school and as soon as he gets to high school he gets like immediately bullied by this piece of shit called Kenny Yankovic Yankovic and Kenny does this weird bullying tactic where he's like you're gonna polish my shoe, new kid. You're gonna polish my shoes. <laughs> Either you shine my boots or I feed this can of polish to you. Boys. Luckily, it gets broken up by a teacher. But anyway, they go to the cafeteria. Then there's a table with a bunch of cool kids. And then there's the apple table. What? <laughs> iPhones just came out. How did they get them? Because they're the popular kids. And then this girl looks up and like maybe she has a crush on him. I don't know. It doesn't fucking matter because it goes nowhere. So let's move on. So, uh, you know, our boy Craig gets home and then uh, he, you know, like a good, a good movie kid, he withholds the information of him getting bullied. First day of high school. How was it? Good. That's it? Just good? <laughs> okay. It was great. But, but he tells his dad that he does want a phone now because he wants to belong, I guess. Can I get a cell phone? What do you need a cell phone for? So we're going to do a little rewind. Mr. Harrigan loved to give devil scratchers as gifts so every time there was a birthday christmas you know shit like that he would give them a devil scratcher gift so that specific christmas he scratches his scratcher and he wins like a few thousand bucks like two thousand bucks uh three thousand dollars three thousand bucks nice so the dad feels a bit like he got one up there because he got him an iphone but that mean that's not three thousand dollars that's gonna be a tough gift to beat but the kid doesn't care he got an iphone plus three thousand buckaroos let's go so he goes to school and he gets to sit with the cool kids and stuff like that. He even develops a crush on this girl, but that subplot goes nowhere. So let's not even talk about it. After a while, he decides that what he wants to do with his $3,000 is to buy Mr. Harrigan a phone. I'm actually on my cell phone. Oh no, they're, they're filled with radiation. And at first he's like, I don't need that shit. But he gets really addicted to it. He gets to, you know, he installs like stocks and newspapers and shit like that on his phone. He even puts like a nice cute ringtone for him and shit. <laughs> yeah. And a few weeks later, he fucking dies. Mr. Harrigan? So basically, that's what like the exposition was. So before we get into the good stuff, so um, so basically, oh my god, we're forty minutes in. Okay, so so then the night he died, he uh, goes on his phone and he types to him as a, like a last goodbye message, like I really enjoyed our afternoons together, you know, reading and such. And then you know the next day they go to the funeral. And that he learns that he received $800,000 in the trust to go to college from Mr. Harrigan because he was a billionaire. And he liked him. And along with the money came a letter. And in the letter it said, P.S. I will miss our afternoons together too. Wait. That's like responding to the text he sent. But he's dead. What is it? You look like you've seen a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> so that night before bed, he sends him a voicemail. I guess, you know, just that, you know, like, uh, you know, what you, what you do when someone you like dies. Then the next morning, he sees that he got a text at 2.30 a.m. from Mr. Harrigan himself that says, K -k 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 Calling Mr. Harrigan at 3 a.m. gone wrong. He tells his dad he's freaking out, you know, and he, the dad's like, bro, chill. You know, like he died unattended. That means they had to do an autopsy. They, they know he's dead. He's like, all right. And then took it upon himself to go to his grave and dig him up. I'm kidding. He just put his ear to the ground and then called his phone and he could hear the ringtone. <gasps> they buried him with his phone. 
Hello. Currently editing the video and I just want to point something out that I thought was weird. So as you just saw, he clearly is really shocked that he can hear the phone in the coffin. But as I was rewatching a bit just now, he clearly put the phone in his jacket at the funeral and it was intended. So I don't know why he's so surprised at that. But yeah, that's all I wanted to point out. Anyways, keep keep watching. <laughs> so he, anyways, he goes back to his normal life. You know, he goes to school and then, you know, Kenny, Kenny Yankovic got suspended or fired from school because he was selling weed on on school property and he thought craig snitched on him but he didn't then uh, at the table and stuff he got invited to a dance by this girl and then he answered k man if i invited someone to a dance and they answered k i would cry and throw up is this how boomers view gen z like is that how <laughs> so the dance happens and stuff and they're dancing you know there's a shot of uh, this girl looking at craig and then uh but like this, this goes nowhere again. I don't know why we're talking about it. Let's just move on. But then his date's like, "Ooh, I got a pee." So the, she goes to the bathroom, you know. And then Craig gets like yanked, Yankoviched, yanked, Yankoviched out. She gets yanked, yank. So he gets beat up in the school parking lot stuff, and then he gets left in this like goofy ass Family Guy pose. <laughs> So then the date finds him and then uh, the teacher fixes him up and then they, he talks to the teacher a little bit and it's like weird moment. I don't know what the fuck. Like, What's up? No, nothing. Smell good. I don't know what world I tell my teacher. Oh, you, you just smell good. Sorry. Like, it's just soap. Okay. Yeah. It's booth Bay soap. It's really nice. I mean, you should grab some for your... Yeah, buy the soap for your dead mom, you loser. God, even the teacher's bullying him. And he goes home, and for some reason, he's still on the bathroom floor. Uh, and then he calls Mr. Harrigan, and he's like, Mr. Harrigan, I got I got beat up pretty bad. And I kind of wish this wouldn't happen again. And then... Oh, he's dead. So then Craig goes to this place. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Let's move to the next one. What's the... He calls Harrigan one more time, and he's like, Okay, look, if you're real, prove it. And then he calls him back. <laughs> he doesn't answer. But he gets a text. This one reads, ah, So he's really spooked now. So he goes to the church and talks to who I'm assuming is a priest. He explains himself to the, to the priest that he's talking to this ghost, basically. And the priest is like, dude, you're fucking dumb. You, people are pranking you, probably. The guy also reveals that, like, Kenny died, like, falling from a roof and stuff like that. And it was all accidental. It's fine. But we see is that he's died in the same goofy-ass family guy pose and also had shoe polish in his mouth, which... Remember the shoe polish thing? Yeah. So, so he's done with his phone. He's like terrified, right? So he goes to the Apple store. How can I help you? I need to get rid of my phone. Okay. I'm actually only upgrading because I got some strange texts. The first iPhones had some weird glitches. Call it a, a ghost in the machine. <laughs> Not a holy one. <laughs> As for your old phone, we do have a charitable program here. Donate it to people who need new cell phones but can't afford them. Okay. Um, no, actually, um... Fuck those kids in need. No, I'm good. I'm good. So he takes the phone home and he throws it in the trash. Smart move. No, just kidding. He puts it in the box and then he leaves it in his closet just in case our little light, light turner wants to commit murder again. So, you know, he moves on with his life. He gets accepted to college. You know, he moves in with a roommate. He's doing well in school. He's killing it. And then his dad calls him. Bad news. Your teacher died. She died in a car accident with her fiance because this douchebag that was drunk driving hit her and then they both died. And then he goes to court and he gets away with it too, the fucking asshole. And he gets to go in a nice little cushy rehab center. Craig is pissed off. He gets his phone out. And this time he's, he cuts the shit. He's like, I want him dead. And then he regrets it because he's possibly condemned someone to death. So he keeps looking at the news, seeing if anyone's died in his town or anything. And then one day, boom, he's dead. He feels his guilt, you know, he's freaking out. It's like, oh my God, I killed him. So to figure out how he died, he goes back to the rehab center and he's posing as a journalist and he's like, I'll pay you if you tell me how he died. This one worker guy. They meet up again and he has the money and he tells him he choked to death. Choked himself to death. Before breakfast, he chugged down some shampoo to grease the runway. Then he took a fancy bar of soap and broke it in two, dropped half on the floor and crammed the other half down his throat. You said fancy soap. Starts with a B. Booth Bay? Yeah, that's it. That's... That's it, how'd you know? Why the fuck would you know what kind of soap it is? Like, kudos to you for being observant and shit, but... Like, man, someone died in the establishment you work in. They're dead in the shower. And the first thing you see is like, that'd be some nice soap for some dead kid's mom. In the same room had a note where there was the lyrics to a song that Mr. Harrigan liked as well, which proves that it was him. So I wonder what's next here. Like, you know, surely, like, he starts developing a liking to this, you know, the, this perfect mix of, of guilt and excitement and fear. And, you know, surely it's enough to make him feel something. Oh. 
So yeah, that was the movie. That's the end. Uh, that's why I thought it was a bit uneventful. Especially that the beginning, he said. And everyone dying. Everyone, dude, that's that's two people. That's uh, three with the teacher. And four with your mom. But that's barely everyone. That's at most some of the ones. Like, come on, man. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, just to be fair, this was based on a novella, which is a novel, but smaller. <laughs> Let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments. Um, personally, I thought it was like barely eventful. Uh, maybe I'm just so used to more like, you know, action-y movie. This was an hour and 46 minutes, you know, five minutes being the credits, especially with all the like side stuff that led nowhere. I don't know. I appreciate you guys so much watching me bitch about movies. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Feel free to subscribe, you know, like the video. And uh, I know there's a few few more of you that have joined the channel recently because of my Pogosuck video. So I appreciate you guys uh, sticking around. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one.